what a beautiful morning today. Um, the sun's up, the wind's died down today. It's just an absolutely gorgeous morning. So I'm out here today on one of my farms we call the 160. And uh, the plan today, uh, we're working on a timber stand improvement project. So I've got this piece of ground. It's got a lot of timber on it. And one thing if you guys own any ground is you want to make sure that you're not um, classified into the recreational category as far as uh, tax purposes. So I know every county is a little different. So um, I'm no expert on this stuff, but um, I know for us, if we can get our uh, ground into a timber program, we're guaranteed one of the lowest tax brackets. So it can make a big difference as far as your taxes go. So um, that's exactly what I did here. Um, I enrolled this farm into a timber program and then a forester came out, walked the timber, marked the timber, um, and drew a plan for me of what to do over the next 10 years to improve the timber on this ground. So then that's turned into the district forester for the state and uh, they'll get with the assessors and make sure that this ground is not considered uh, recreational and that uh, we get the best tax bracket. So it can make a huge difference for you um, if you've got some ground for hunting, okay? Um, but today I'm gonna start this project. Um, they break it down into different sections. So I've got 45 acres of timber to actually work on this year and I'll walk you through it, but um, it can be a pretty major project. So I've got a lot of trees to cut. Um, you know, I always laugh and talking to people the next day after doing one of these uh, projects for the weekend and people say you know what'd you do this weekend I say I cut some trees and they say oh, how many trees did you cut and I'll say I don't know a couple thousand and they'll kind of laugh but um, it's the truth we're gonna go through this timber I mean a lot of stuff we're cutting they're gonna be real small but we're gonna cut basically any trash uh, timber try to open up specific trees but it's a lot of work um, but it can be well worth it, it creates a lot of cover for wildlife um, we're going to open up some of those valuable trees that someday we can actually um, harvest and get some money off this land as well. Um, but the big thing for me being a deer hunter is I want to create that uh, thick, dense cover um, on the forest floor. So by going through and doing some TSI projects, it can really transform your uh, timber area and make your bedding much more um, likely to be used by the deer. So that's the project today we're going to get after. It's an absolutely perfect day and uh, we'll see what we can do. Um, you know, I'm working on this project by myself, so I really want to do the best I can to try to explain to you what we're doing and why we're doing it and try to really break it down. I know some of you guys have done these things before, you know exactly what you're doing, but also there's a lot of other guys out there that maybe have. I've never done this at all. Um, you know, barely know how to even run a chainsaw, but yet they've got some property they want to do things to improve their ground. So I really want to kind of go all the way back to step one and see if I can explain to you um, from the very start how we do these things. So again, we kind of mentioned it before, the purpose of these projects are to try to improve our timber. Um, my goal specifically is to especially improve my timber um, for value someday as far as timber itself. But the biggest thing is for deer habitat cover. So I want to try to create thickness in my timber. Um, a lot of guys when they look at a piece of timber they're going to see some big beautiful oaks and you know wide open space and you can see you know four or five hundred yards through the timber and it just looks like beautiful timber. Well from a habitat standpoint that is really bad timber. I would rather go and look at a piece of timber and barely be able to see 20 yards. That's habitat. When you think of a deer's world, a deer's world is from three feet down. So things may look great to us standing at six feet, you know, looking up, but from a deer's aspect, drop to your knees and look around. And that's where you can really start to see what kind of habitat you have for your deer. So as I'm looking at this piece today, um, you know, again, I'm by myself, so it's hard to cut and show you as I'm doing it, what's going on. But I want to come in here and basically thicken this space up. I want to open things up so sunlight gets to this forest floor. And so it starts to create more brows, more cover. And then specific trees, you know, you want to pick them out and say, here's a nice oak, here's a nice walnut maybe, here's a nice tree that needs to grow. And then work around that tree, try to open up some canopy, get some more light to that tree to release it, they call it. But things like this, you know, you can see here, we've got this big old vine. These things grow a lot in the wild, but these things will go up and actually strangle a tree, um, creates a lot of stress on that tree. When you cut these things, you'll be amazed how much water flows out of these things. They, they suck a lot of water and nutrients out of the ground, especially in the summers when it's hot and dry. So anytime we see these vines, you know, we're gonna be cutting these. This is part of the program. Um, trees like this, you know, this is just a little elm. This is not a good quality tree. You know, you can see here another small elm, 
next to a, a nether elm. Neither one of these trees are going to make it, so this is a tree I want to cut. Um, you have lots of elms in here. This piece of timber has actually, this is only the third year I've owned this property, so I'm still trying to improve it, but you know, the quality of the timber is not very good in here, so we're going to improve it. Now here you've got a nice oak tree. Um, nice oak tree, but again, you can see we've got a bunch of elms around it kind of crowding the crown of this tree. So I'm going to come in and actually try to open this tree up. We're going to cut several of these elms down, open this space up. But you can see as I'm kind of walking through here, um, there's just lots of young little trees, but not quality trees. So again, we want to save those quality trees, get some sunlight in here. So there's lots of acorns. There's lots of young trees that are just waiting here in the soil, but they need more sunlight. So, you know, here's an elm. We're going to cut that. Uh, you know, here's an elm. We're going to cut this little elm. Now here's a little hickory. We may try to actually save this tree. So we'll get rid of this trees around it. We'll open this young little hickory tree up here. Um, locust tree. Uh, you can see the thorns on this things. I can't stand these trees. So we're going to come in. This is a pretty big tree. Um, don't have a lot of space in here. So we may not drop this tree. I may come in and actually just ring this tree so it dies slowly over time. Uh, you can see here, here's a vine growing. And it's actually coming up this nice oak here. Definitely going to come in and cut that. A uh, couple nice oaks over here. We're going to try to open them up. Uh, you can see this tree here is leaning. It's got a scar on it. This is never going to make a quality tree. We're going to cut this tree. Uh, here we've got actually a pretty nice cherry. Um, you can see by this rough bark here. So again, we've got two elms crowding this cherry. We've got another elm and a, actually an ironwood here. There's a big vine coming down. So I'm going to cut every one of these trees around this cherry and actually try to open this cherry up. So I'm going to kind of show you guys what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to try to set up a camera so you can actually see it as I'm doing it. But I'm going to work all the way down this ridge today and try to work on this ridge here to open it up. Okay, I want to go over a little bit on the gear that we use to do these uh, TSI projects. Um, first thing, you always got to have a good hard hat. Um, this one here has actually got the earmuffs on it, which is great. When you're cutting all day long, that noise can get to you pretty quickly. So do not uh, cut without a hard hat. I can't tell you how many times over the years I've had things, you know, you're cutting a tree and there's a branch above that will break and fall. Um, I've had many times where branches have hit me in the head and this has helped. Um, always be careful when you're cutting though. Um, you know, a lot of people call them widow makers, trees that got branches that are, um, you know, hanging in one tree when you're cutting and they'll fall. So always look up and, and know what you're cutting, but a hard hat can really help you out with some smaller branches, okay? Uh, make sure you've got a good set of gloves, um, preferably cutting gloves. A lot of these gloves will actually have material inside them, whereas if you were to accidentally uh, you know touch the blade or something with the back of these gloves here by accident um, There's fibers in here that will actually bound up in the blade and actually stop the blade. So a good set of gloves Obviously you need a, a good saw um, preferably two um, There's always those times where a saw is gonna get pinched and you need a second saw to help cut you out So uh, make sure you've got some good chainsaws um, But I would say without a doubt the most important thing is and I want to stress is do not do these projects or do not do cutting without a pair of cutting chaps on um, these things will save your life. When you're cutting trees, especially when you're doing these projects, you are going to be cutting all day long. Um, a lot of times I'll spend six, eight, you know, sometimes 10 hours uh, a day cutting. Your arms start to get tired, your back starts to get tired, um, you know, you get a little weak and it's harder to hold that saw. And you can see right here, I've got a spot on these where um, I have actually nicked these pants with my chain. Um, if I did not have these pants on, that chain was going right into my leg and uh, a chain is not forgiving at all on the on skin or on muscle so um, it is extremely important when you're doing these projects you're going to be cutting a lot of small things you're going to be cutting multiple things um, do not cut without these cutting chaps on um, and if you have somebody helping you or you've got you know somebody help with the project you know I always carry an extra pair with me um, do not let anyone run a saw or do it on these projects without these chaps on these things will save your life so super important um, you got to be safe when you're doing these things you know you want to be able to in enjoy uh, this project that you're working on for years to come so uh, make sure first off that you're safe and uh, you wear the proper gear for this <laughs>
Okay, so we're just uh, working up to our next spot here. Um, this is a little ridge coming down a little further than where we were at. Just want to kind of show you this spot. So I'm looking at this spot and I'm pretty excited because what I see here is I see a lot of mature oaks scattered in here, but then I see a ton of ironwood. I see a ton of elms. I see a ton of small trees. Um, this is pretty open. I can see, you know, 100, 150 yards up through these little ridges here. So same thing comes with the deer. You know, the deer don't want to bed in areas where they can see a long way, see a bunch of other deer. Um, they want security, they want cover. If you got a big mature buck bed in here, and say you've got another buck bedded 150 yards down the ridge, if he's sitting there staring at that buck all day, that's not gonna work out. So if you can create that cover where that buck can bed here, not see that big deer all day when he's laying down there, you can actually hold more bucks on a particular property. So we're trying to get this as thick as we can. But you know, you got to look at it like this. Everybody around you's probably got timber. So you want to make your timber better. Um, let's say you were a person and you had a hotel pass and you could go to any hotel that you wanted to in the country. Most of us would probably choose to go to, you know, a fancy Ritz Carlton, maybe with the pool or with nice restaurants, if it was the same price as a Super 8. Well, we want to create this and make this bedding and this area for the bucks to actually spend their time the best we can. So. I want the deer to want to bed here and not bed on my neighbor. So if I'm going to do that, I've got to make this spot better than the neighbors. So we're going to come in here and we're going to thicken this up. But a lot of trees in here. I'm going to work through here, get this really opened up, get this thickened up. And this is going to actually be a really nice area in here. There's a lot of deer already that are traveling through here, but I don't see deer bedding here. So we're going to create better habitat, try to hold more deer on this property. All right, so here's a really cool spot. Coming down this little hillside here, we've got a little saddle or a little ridge, and this drops off uh, gently down to a nice bottom. So this is a great little bedding spot here for deer where they can come in and get the wind blowing over their back uh, with the south wind, and they can look and see down this bottom. So great spot for a deer to bed. But as you can see, it's really open in here. We've got a lot of big mature oaks scattered in here, but then a bunch of ironwoods and trees that just have little value um, economically or for wildlife. So I'm gonna come in here and try to really thicken this little knob up. I'm gonna um, try to specifically drop trees, crisscross them, but make this really thick. And this actually could be a really nice bedding area for some deer here. But again, uh, today is going great. We're um, getting a lot of cutting done. It's a beautiful day. And uh, this spot should be really nice when we get it done. So um, I'm gonna specifically try to make this a, a bedding area. Well, part of cutting is, uh, you know, kick the chain off there. So one thing, if you're gonna be doing this, you need to learn how to take part of saw and learn how to use them well. But um, you can see just that little bit of cutting I did there. We're creating a nice little bedding area in through there. So gonna go uh, get this saw fixed, gas up and keep going. Okay, so you can kind of see here, just gonna walk through some of this area. I mean, it's already to the point where it's hard to walk through. Um, you know, you can see it may look ugly to you. I mean, you've got trees, trees crisscrossed everywhere. This stuff is gonna break down really fast, but if you were to get down and you were a deer, I mean, look at the difference in this cover, in this structure, in this density, um, with just, you know, 15 minutes of work here. Also, all this open floor that you see, like in through here, sunlight is gonna to get to here now. You can see where I cut these trees. This is all gonna blow, blow, blow up into thick brush. Um, you know, you can see, I could talked about these vines hanging here. This is one of those vines that we, uh, we cut. Um, but anyways, just kind of walking through here, like I said, it just didn't do that much, 15 minutes. But already this is gonna make a huge difference as far as our cover. So that's gonna come in here and this is gonna create a lot more bedding. But this is what you wanna do. You know, get stuff knocked down. Don't worry about what it looks like this first year. Um, this is bedding for deer. 
You know, it's not supposed to look pretty. But all the sunlight's gonna get in here. We're gonna really open up some of these nice trees and get some sunlight to them. So we're just gonna keep working our way down the ridge. Um, by the time we're done here, this is gonna be a great little bedding area. And even just getting this ridge here alone, this is right off a of food plot. So deer are really gonna like to stage and bed in this area here come this fall already. So I just want to kind of walk up through here, kind of show you what I what I did. I did about four tanks of gas today. Um, it's been about four hours. My forearms are starting to get tired, so probably going to call it a day today. But I'm just going to kind of walk up through here. You can kind of see what this looks like. So um, you know, it's a mess when you get done. There's trees crisscrossed everywhere, but you know, in a couple weeks uh, things are gonna start to green up and then you know, within a year or two this is gonna be really thick so we've already got a lot of briars we've already got a lot of ground cover in here so this extra sunlight that we're throwing in here is gonna really make this night but this is just perfect deer cover um, it's thick gets a nice roll to it um, this farm holds a lot of deer and, and that's why but we kind of went in through here and um, just tried to open up some of these nicer trees. Dropped a lot of the elms and locusts and low quality trees. And then, uh, you know, try to open up some crown to some of these nicer trees and get some sunlight in here. But this forest floor hasn't seen sunlight in quite a while. So there'll be all kinds of new growth that's gonna bust up out of here. But you, know, you can see, it's hard to even walk through here, but this is gonna be awesome cover for deer. Um, it's thick and gnarly. And can't wait to see in a year or two what this is going to look like but we're going to keep plugging away um it's going to take a lot of weekends to get through all this but we'll just do a little bit of time when you start getting tired the best thing to do is to quit but this is a tsi project 2020 phase one okay so just finished up my tsi project for the day uh, put about six hours in today cut a lot of trees just got to the point where my forearms, my wrists were so sore, I was having trouble actually even holding the saw up. So when I get to that point, it's uh, it's time to call it a day. So I'm going to head home now and uh, go pick up some carry out for the family. But had a good day, got a lot done. I think that project is going to really help that farm. Um, it's amazing the really low quality that, of timber that's on that piece there. So years ago, obviously, somebody must have timbered that and timbered it pretty hard. And a lot of the lesser quality trees have grown up so it's as good as days any to start managing that timber so i'm going to get in there and do the best i can to improve that but we made a lot of progress today cut out a lot of trees that had low value added a lot of cover to the ground sunlight to the floor so those oaks and some other things can generate on their own but it's really going to help that piece out um, so next we're going to be moving into food plots some other things we're going to continue to work on that project it's going to probably take me most of the summer to try to get through that um, but if you guys have any questions on that, feel free to comment, um, shoot us a message. We're here to help you out, so I'd be happy to answer any questions. Make sure you like and subscribe um, to our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. We're going to keep trying to bring you as much information as you can. But if you've got any specific questions, um, I'd be more than happy to answer anything we can to help you guys out. Thanks for watching.